from the forest school camps handbook um well we went camping and i heard them singing it around the fire and it's just an amazing song mm -hmm. and you know i've known folk music for a long time and, and most songs i've kind of come across in some way or another never heard anything like that so i was really interested in it and um there has been a story floating around that it was written as a poem by a guy who was sort of due to be hung in the spanish civil war and then passed through the bars to his jailer and the tune again apparently is a Spanish old medieval tune, but um, I don't know, there's a couple of people out there digging at the moment to see if they can find out more about it, because it's, yeah, it's a really interesting song. You've set up a, a number of local events in, in the area, um, what inspired you to get involved in the sort of folk community? I've always organised stuff, I'm a bit of a form filler in it, I like a funding application and things like that, um, I set up the Howarth Arts Festival when I was 20, 19, 20, 20. Um, with some people and the Freeze Company sort of artist-led agency with Maggie Boyle and Damien Barber. Um, we sort of got the Demon Barbs Roadshow on the road and things. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, I've just, I quite like doing things, organising things and 
and here when we moved to Sheffield, there's loads of things happening in Sheffield and it's a brilliant, vibrant session scene and some great singers clubs, but there's no real guest clubs. There's one right down south Sheffield, down in Chesterfield, and then there's obviously The Rock um, over in Maltby and they're brilliant clubs, but actually Sheffield City Centre don't have that many booked things. They have to get odd concert. Um, so we wanted to have something that we wanted to go out to and where we could invite people we wanted to hear to come and play. So we set up the Royal at the Royal Traditions. And then with um, Martin Simpson, obviously, meeting him in Sheffield has been great. And him and John had this idea to, they wanted to play together somewhere, sort of a stress-free environment. So me and Kit got on with organising that, and that's Bright Phoebus, which is a beast of its own, really. <laughs> and where did that name come from? Top of somebody's head, I can't remember. I don't know. But it, it's nicely fitting with the album, all a bit sort of pushing the boundaries and doing something of the folk world, but... A bit exciting, really. Tell us a little bit more about Royal Traditions. What sort of thing happens on a, an average night? Well, the Royal Traditions, we tried to turn a folk club on its head a bit, and um, we've got we have booked guests, um, people like the Wilsons, or we've got Chris Sherman and Danny Bartley coming up, um, and then we've got Will Noble and John Cockin as well. So just people that we like and want to hear, really, um, with a big, strong singing and a good atmosphere. Um, they do a spot, it's in the main bar of the pub, so it's all open to the public, but you have to pay for a seat if you want to sit down. They're always sellouts to seats. And then, so they do some spots and we have some house songs where we have printed words and everyone can join in with us, sort of encourage everyone singing and this big group thing. And then the guest is over by 10 and we have a singing session afterwards, which is just great and you don't get any of that or oh, sing around, okay, who's going to start us off then? Because everyone's so eager to get singing by the end of the act, it's great. And, and the main guests usually stay around and we have a really good session afterwards, it's good. Quite a little hotbed around Sheffield of uh, folkies at the moment, isn't there? There are. James and Nancy have just moved up, which is brilliant. And as I say, Martin Simpson's here and we've got Crucible. And yeah, loads of people seem to be around Sheffield, which is great. Because I came down from Newcastle, which obviously has got a bit of a scene going on there so to come to another vibrant scene is brilliant and there's a, a sort of Sheffield singing tradition isn't there the carols up here in Dunworth are amazing yeah really amazing and um, that's a totally different thing to the folk scene as I've seen it and um, we're really lucky in our local pub here to have from Armster Stay to the first Sunday after Christmas I believe it is every Sunday 12 till 2 there'll be three four hundred people in the pub singing Christmas carols, local carols, Methodist basically, um, to an organ player. And the, the, there's some folk who's come out for it, but it's mainly local people and farmers and there's a lot of, you know, um, check shirts and corduroy trousers in. It's really good. You've been doing a PhD, which is uh, on a folk topic as well. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, that's all written down with the assessors, so I don't know. It's a bit out of my hands at the moment, but that's called Contemporary English Folk Singing and the Creation of Community. So it's looking at the current folk scene, folk clubs, folk sessions, singing sessions, um, and how, you know, looking at it through the lens of community as an academic term and various applications of that as a concept. And yeah, it's sort of been five years in the making and hopefully nearly over. <laughs> So, I mean, you've kind of been creating your own community in Dunworth, really, with the Royal Tradition. I think we all do, yeah, with what we're doing and groups that you join. And I don't know, looking further than the singing, I had to put a remit on that, but on the Morris teams and things, mm. there's always little groups within groups and it, it comprises, it's not just about going out and singing, it's people's social worlds and and a lifelong connection with it. It's a, It's quite a big deal for people, I think.